Phil fans of YouTube, hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, your movie apprentice, and today we continue the Studio Ghibli watch through with The Cat Returns, directed by Hiroyuki Morita. After Haru, a teenage girl, saves a cat from being hit by a truck, she earns the gratitude of the cat kingdom, as it turns out the cat she saved was their prince. But they're a little aggressive in their gratitude. Before I get into the review, if you like what I do on this channel, consider clicking the like button and subscribing. Or hitting that bell notification that helps with the algorithm, helps the videos get out there to more people. But without further ado, let's get into this review. So this will be the first one that doesn't have any written or directorial credit from either Hayao or Isao, which is a first for this studio. And this is also the first studio that brings back a character from a previous film with the Baron from Whisper of the Heart returning in his lifelike form and his statue form to assist Haru in a dilemma of dealing with these grateful cats. This is by far the funniest Ghibli film I have seen thus far, mainly because of the dialogue exchange between certain characters, especially between Cat Muta and this crow called Toto. They have a very passive-aggressive love-hate dynamic between them, and their arguments had me in stitches for a lot of the movie. But this film is very out there. This whole scenario it plays up like any Ghibli film does like a realistic world with a bit of fantastical element to it thrown in at the start but then it starts getting weird from the bit where the cats thank her for saving their prince loon because the cats are playing music walking down the street in a massive conga line complete with bodyguards throwing off these stray cats no one comes out to check it i know i shouldn't be looking at realism or anything special when it comes to a 2D animated film, because that's not what animated films are for. But even so, wow, it was a interesting one to say the least. And it just gets weirder from there. Haru, as a protagonist for me, is a bit of an idiot. There are certain points in the movie where she just says she's going to do one thing and does the complete opposite for the sake of doing it. There's this whole dynamic of her trying to evade these cats, but she seems to believe that these cats are genuine in their gratitude, which technically they are, but she thinks they will listen to reason and listen to what they think's best. And despite everything they've shown her so far being the complete opposite of that, she still believes that and gets herself to a lot of messes throughout the film. It's great seeing the Baron return in his statue form before revealing himself as a cat. And he's, as you would expect, the Baron. He is literally how the lead of Whisper of the Heart represented him he is very posh speaking if he's gonna fight he takes off his suit jacket he walks with his cane he's very pompous very self-assured he is very upper class let's say and Muta he spends a lot of the film complaining about everything but he's got a heart of gold there's a certain thing about his character that is revealed later on that I don't think is needed because I just loved him as being the lazy fat cat that's just angry and grumpy all the time that likes to munch on things he is hilarious to watch and honestly he was my favorite part of this film was a side character because he just brought a smile to my face every time he was on screen and he really helped lift off some of the somewhat tension that the film did have i think my biggest problem with this is that there's not really a whole underlying message between it, it is literally a schoolgirl saves a cat has his cats aggressively try to show their gratitude in very weird ways that make no sense and really gives away that cats are more than just these lazy, passive-aggressive little gits that wander the streets. It's very inconsistent with how it tries to balance between being a classic Ghibli film that's more grounded in reality and being a very out-there, fantastical film. Don't get me wrong, I love cats, and the cat's the animal, not cats the film. Let's let's just clear that up right there. I do love scenes where they mirror Whisper of the Heart. There is a scene where Haru is following Muta through back alleys and through all these weird directions that was very much akin to Whisper of the Heart, where Ghost is being followed by our lead protagonist. But it's just one of those films that it didn't grab me in the way many Ghibli films did. The art style, while it was clean, it didn't feel as vibrant as did Spirit of the Way. And I said in my previous review that the vibrant feel 
and the bright colours are what's going to hold the standard for me when it comes to the animation films going forward from this point on. And this film is a bit more gritty and a bit more harsh than I might have let it slide, but this one was very much a fantasy film with a lot of comedy in it, and there was something slightly washed out about the animation on this one. It's kind of weird that the Baron is back in this one because the film that was in originally was probably the most down-to-earth one of all the Ghibli films, and this one was probably one of the more out-there Ghibli films, from teleporting cats to talking cats to walking hind leg cats. There's a whole lot of cats in this. This is better than the live-action cats, but there's a lot of weirdness that takes place within this. There are some plot threads and elements that are revealed towards the end that we as an audience, we can see them from a mile away. It is plainly obvious what the character that is helping Haru is, but she doesn't put it together until it's spelled out for her, and you are just wondering how. And I feel like this is probably the Jibby film that's mainly focused on being for kids, because kids won't see the twist coming, but anyone older than the age of 14 would see this little character twist coming. Overall, the cat returns, I will say I did have fun with it. That's why I will say I did have fun with it. It did make me laugh a lot more than a lot of the Ghibli films have, but it lacked an underlying message. The protagonist I thought was quite dumb at times and ended up caring more about the side characters than our lead character, which isn't generally a great thing when it comes to movies. And while it's nice to see the Baron back in this, it's just a bit weird that he was in one of the most realistic Ghibli films and now he's in one of the most out there ones. And you just wonder, is this the same world or is this a story that the lead of Whisper of the Heart wrote? Because if that is the case, then maybe I could let it slide a bit more. But it's not really emphasised in this. So, while it's an enjoyable Ghibli film, like a lot of them, it's just not very high on my, wow, this is Ghibli. I feel like any studio could have made this movie. So overall, I'm going to have to say that The Cat Returns for me is just an okay cup of tea. So The Cat Returns, have you seen it? If you have, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Again, you like what I do in this channel? Be sure to click that like button for making it this far and subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification, get them numbers up. I very much appreciate it. Coming up next on the channel, we have Howl's Moving Castle, which is definitely gonna be an interesting one to talk about. But until next time, my name is Josh, I've been your movie apprentice, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thank you for watching, and thank you for making it to the end of the video. While you're here, if you haven't done it yet, please feel free to drop a like and consider hitting that subscribe button for more views coming all the time. And also, while you are here, there are some other videos over there that you might want to sink your teeth into. Have a good day, guys, and do enjoy.